To be or not to be? That was the question. To be or not to be? Whether it is nobler in the mind, <laughs> whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer. Does anybody know the rest? Little Shakespeare. Ah, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. And? Know the rest? That was it. <laughs> Let's take a deep breath. To be or not to be? That was the question. The question was asked by Hamlet. Should I live or should I die? What's the use? I'm stuck in the suffering of my mind and these outrageous fortunes, or rather misfortunes, <laughs> that I'm experiencing. Do I want to be here or do I want to go? What do I do? Can I put myself out of this misery? Asked Hamlet, written by William Madama Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh, you laugh. <laughs> so, dear Jambra, the question now is to be aware or not to be aware. That is the question. That is the true question. To be aware or not to be aware. And I ask each one of you as we open this segment, what is the answer? To be aware or not to be aware. To be aware or not. Because the reality is that you are in the middle lands. You are in the middle lands. One eye open, one eye shut. Walking in a world of humans with two eyes closed. In the middle lands. Not sure what goes next. In the dreaded, despicable middle lands of awakening. Where there is a desire for hope. But yet, at times, so bleak, so gray, and so dreamless. In that middle lands that causes you to want to take many steps back to that old reality where all walked with eyes shut. And you, now, walking in the middle lands amongst your fellow humans, one eye open. How do you explain to them what awareness is? The blind man, the blind people, the blind group of humans, and just one eye open you have. How do you explain to them when they beg and beckon for you to come back to that old reality, to that old place of no awareness? You with one eye open and one eye still closed. How do you explain awareness to those who have both eyes closed? How could you possibly explain sight to those who are blind? How could you possibly explain what it is to have some deep inner churning of the soul and heart? To want to move quickly out of the old ways and the patterns of humans, but yet not knowing where you're going to. How do you explain to those with no sight whatsoever? How do you explain the world you are leaving without knowing the world that you are entering? In the Netherlands, in the middle lands of awakening, that's exactly where you are. You have no idea that the words I speak to you are of truth or just of some another delirious mind. <laughs> you have no idea if there is such a thing as an ascended master, you're in the middle lands, but you know, you know in your heart that you cannot go back to the world of the blind, to the world of the unaware. And even though you try to do that at times, oh, you try so desperately to return back to that place from where you came, but you can't go back with one eye still open. You can't seem to close both of them. So here you are, drifting on an endless sea, drifting on this sea of troubles, not knowing whether you are aware or unaware, not knowing what comes next. And what do you have to resort to? Not words that others say, not simply the hope that's in your heart. What you have to rely on is you and only you. What you have to rely on goes far beyond the mind because the mind is the strangest of all the aspects. <laughs> let it out, my dear, let it out. <laughs> the mind is the strangest of all the aspects. You no longer rely on the mind. It has deceived you. It has created illusions that it has had you believe to be real when in your heart you know they are not. What you have to rely on is you, but yet unsure of who you are, still trying to find you in this endless sea of troubles, still trying to identify you, something that simply cannot be done. So you dive deeper. You dive deeper into you. And you come to the point of realizing that you is not who you thought you were. Whatsoever. The you that you've known was simply a creation of a mind, a mind that was conceived here on earth, that was developed here on earth, refined and programmed here on earth. The mind, the strangest of all the aspects, not you whatsoever. So where do you find you? Certainly beyond the mind, even beyond the heart. You find you in those darkest hours that you've had, those dreadful, horror-like, nightmarish dark hours that you've had. Each and every one of you have had them. Those dark hours when you know there is no going back to the world of the blind and the unaware. Those dark hours when you wonder, who am I? dark hours where you wonder to be or not to be. Should I, should I terminate this? How can I release myself from this trap? How can I release myself from this mental anguish and this physical pain and this lack of knowingness? Those dark hours when you come to the deepest, the simplest and the truest of truths. The only thing that matters is I exist. That's it. I exist. And from that simplest, most truthful of places, a place that defies the mind and even the heart, a place that defies all of your previous experiences, any beliefs that you ever had, anything that you thought to be good or bad, real or unreal. This place of I exist, the simplest of all truths, is where you find you. Not surrounded by anything, anyone else. Not confused by the world of the blind, not confused by the world of your mind, where your desperate attempts to save an identity of yourself. In that simplest of places, I exist, is where you start to hear the beat, the rhythm of your soul. I exist. Therefore, I am. It's all that matters. All that matters. To be aware or not to be aware, such a torturous question. Such a torturous middle land you find yourselves in. But, my dear friends, you feel, you have felt, even if it's only for a moment of time, you have felt there is something deep within you. Something that doesn't rely on any other human. Something that doesn't care about your past, your health, your intelligence, your looks, or your money. Antonius Block. 
spiller sjakk med døden.